So last year, Ric Flair retired, finally. His last match, apparently. Which I've not actually watched, but I've heard it's very scary to watch, being that apparently, you know, he blacked out twice and at any point in the match, he looked like he was absolutely going to die. This guy even faked a heart attack in front of his family during this match. So, yeah, a very interesting last match, if it's Ric Flair's last match, you never know about that guy. But we're not here to discuss that match. No, we're here to discuss another retirement match. Well, I say retirement match, it was five retirement matches. And uh, you know what? As you think that sounds a bit odd, but um, it was fantastic. Yes, that's right. I'm talking about KJ Muta, the great Muta's retirement tour, which the matches were fine, but let's just talk about the dream opponents he had, the, the final match too with Naito. So let's get into this. Let's get into Great Muta's final retirement because it was fan bloody tastic. If you're going to do a retirement tour, this is how you do it. This is it. like nothing against Ric Flair, nothing against that, you know, legend. Can't, you know, can't argue against that. But my goodness, this was fantastic. So we'll start off with the first match which was a passing of the torch match. Now, he did this match earlier on in 2022 and had other matches before his final Grand Four matches, but this one was considered the uh, passing of the torch match. For him, it was Keiji Muta and Kaito Kiramira, who I think is going to have an extended year. I've already talked about his match with Keno, his match with Okada as well was fantastic. So, this was definitely a passing of the torch match. Okay, obviously, Kita made it goes over. Just in a watch as well, you could see in Muta, like in the match, you can sort of see KG looking at Kaido going, he was frustrated, but he knew this is the future of Noah. This is the future champion. Well, he, you know, he is the current champion of Noah. So that was his first match and it, you know, it made sense. So the thing is with this tour, this tour was he had matches with New Japan and Noah, but he also has two characters he's got his, his, his normal keiji muta and then obviously he's got the great muta persona so it was a pile of different matches for this which is great more matches for us for his retirement fantastic yeah so like he did that match and then as I, i've discussed before in the video about you know the great start in japan we got great the great muta versus nakamura as his this was his second match his second match retirement when i saw the graphic for this i had to look twice because i still couldn't believe we're going to get Great Muta and Nakamura, and Nakamura in a you know the, the WWE superstar in a Noah wrestling ring at the, Bud the Budokan, which is a famous venue in Japan. As I've discussed about this match before, great length. Go watch it just for Nakamura's entrance, Muta, and the emotional ending of this match. Every match for his retirement was an emotional bloody ending, but this was this was quite special, especially for Nakamura. Any any of the younger guys. I say younger guys, but you know, the younger generation of wrestlers that got a chance to wrestle him on, the, on this really appreciated it, especially Nakamura. So uh, yeah, go go watch that one. That New Year's show on January 1st was, for Noah was fantastic. Three or four days later, he had Wrestle Kingdom. Oh, four days later, yeah, he had, he had Wrestle Kingdom 17 with um, a tag match, a fun tag. His last, it was going to be his last, uh, this was his last, let me get my notes straight on this. Yeah, this was his last New Japan show. This is going to be the last time Wrestle Kingdom, his last time last chance appearing on New Japan for wrestling and he was involved in a six-man tag so again this was just a kind of a fun match in the way I wouldn't take it to it was Keiji Muta Tana, with Tanahashi and Shota Umino who's been been a rising star an absolute rising star Shota Umino keep an eye on that kid and it was them versus um, LIJ so it was Bushi, Sanada and Naito Naito being very important in this obviously yeah, it was a fun match, definitely. But one thing I also remember is obviously Keiji Muta has been told by his doctors not to do moon salts anymore. I could literally kill the man, apparently. And he kept going up to one and two one, and Tanahashi would sort of tell him, "No, no, no, you don't need to, you don't need to do that. What are you doing? Don't, don't do that, you idiot." So you know, it was a fun match. Um, I think it was Naito that picked up a pen. I've got my notes here. I could be wrong. I could be wrong. If I am, just tell me in the comments. If I'm wrong, I don't mind being corrected because usually I'm. I'm not always perfect. So yeah, this was a really good six-man tag for his last sort of Wrestle Kingdom performance. It wouldn't be his last match at the Tokyo Dome. Uh, that comes later on, so it does. But yeah, this was a this was a fun match to put in the middle of the card, just like for the for the New Japan fans at Wrestle Kingdom. A chance to do his last Wrestle Kingdom as well. It was fun. Now we get to the uh, the last two matches we're going to take place in Noah, obviously, and my my goodness, like. This six-man tag that he did for Noah 
when we saw the great Muta come out at AEW to confront Sting and Darby Allen and ask them, do you want to tag up for a six-man tag? I still I still can't get over it. I still can't go over that. Great Muta, Sting and Darby Allen. Never thought I'd get to say that in my bloody life. Taking on um, Akira, uh, Hakushi and Murafuji. I'm oh, sorry, Murafuji. I can't have got that right. This was a great match. But you gotta get, you've gotta forgive them maybe the first two or three minutes because it starts off with uh, Great Muta and I think it's Hakushi in the ring. <laughs> and God, this is a slow start. I mean, look, Japan, we all know, we all know they have slow starts sometimes to their matches, but this was, this was slow. This was really slow. <laughs> you can't, both men are getting on a bit, obviously. I was surprised they started off with these two guys. Um, but obviously, when you've got like, you know, Darby Allen and uh, Moto Fuji and uh, Kira, like, the match did build up and pace and picked up and like getting Sting to come into the ring. And Sting in a Noah ring. Just, again, it was the same as Nakamura. I never thought I was going to see that in my life. And like, you know, this was another good match. This was a, just, just weird seeing, not weird, but special, I would say, seeing, you know, just like Muta tagging in Darby Allen. When, when was I ever going to see that in my life? You know? <laughs> so that's what, that's what I'm talking about this tour. There's a lot of things that you would never thought you'd see in your life. And, you, and because of Muta, we got to see it. It was fantastic. So yeah, that was a great six-man tag to watch, just just for the sheer interest of seeing Sting and Darby Allen in a J Japanese match. Just for that, you know, go watch that. Then obviously we come to like his 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 last match, his final match, his final. And unlike certain Americans, he will stay retired. I mean, look at Dusha Van Liger, he's he stayed retired. Thank goodness, love him as well. Um, so the last match was it was set up pretty much after the six-man tag at Wrestle Kingdom, that we were going to get Keiji Muto versus Naito, Tetsuya Naito of LIJ of New Japan. And this was going to take place again at the Tokyo Dome in front of... I'm, I'm thinking back to... If someone could comment to me the attendance for Ric Flair's last match, which took place in a giant warehouse, I think it was. I'm not too sure. Keiji Muto's last match took place at the Tokyo Dome with 30,000 plus fans there. Generally, just to see it. Okay, there was other great matches on the card, which I will slightly talk about. So we're in a minute. But like, yeah. So I mean, it's it's Naito and Keiji Muta, and they've been in the ring before at a uh, Wrestle Kingdom, the ten years prior. But this is before Naito was main card of an Lij pool. Like all the fans could have shit. All the fans loved them. So it's pre Naito that that Naito version. Um, Still a great fucking match to watch. But uh, so this match was generally all about kind of Naito coming back to KG and being like, hey, you remember me 10 years ago? This is a different Naito. Oops, sorry. This is a different Naito. This isn't a Naito from 10, 11 years ago. Okay, I, I, I'm a different, I'm a different cat now, basically. And um, again, with as I've said before, with all these matches, they're all good matches. The, the, you know, there's no absolute bangers, but look, KG is 60 years old. You know, and um, he still, you know, he can still go in the ring. He still looks good. There's some stuff like his dragon, dragon screw leg is really awesome to watch, and he can still strike. He can, he can still run the ropes a bit too. You know, he can still, he can still do things. Go your way to watch that match. But I say, like, there was a couple of matches I will mention on that particular show. You know, it was the uh, the last thing we got, uh, the last love show for Noah. That was the match with Naito. And I would just quickly say the other matches that you should definitely check out again from that show would be I would check out it would be the junior champions of No and uh, New Japan, uh, Takahashi and uh, Amakusa. I think that's how you pronounce that right. That was a really fun match to watch. Obviously, they were former tag team partners in the UK many, many, many years ago. And then the other match I would definitely go on my way to watch from that same show is the Kirumiro Okada match, which. That was that was something I was looking forward to very much. I'm hoping they do a second match, which I think they will do a second match. Fingers crossed they do a second match. But yeah, the, you know that that was the end of the retirement tour. It was a, what five matches is that? I mean, what retirement tour to announce for yourself? Okay, I'm gonna do a passing of the torch match with Kinamira. I'm gonna have a a dream match against Nakamura. My last Wrestle Kingdom match is gonna have. Tanahashi Umaru versus Lij to set up for my final match. Oh, hey, do you know what? Do you know what would be great? Oh, let's let's bring in Sting and Darby Allen. I'm I'm on my retirement tour. Why not? So, and then the last match against Naito. Just 
a brilliant retirement tour. When we got, we got to the end of that, I was very happy, man. <laughs> so yeah, um, America, take a take a note from Japan. That's how you do a retirement tour. So <laughs> you don't you don't scare your fans that you're gonna kill yourself. <laughs> so please go and watch those matches just in in memory of uh, obviously he's not passed away, but it just it's just in memory of his greatness in the wrestling ring, KJ Muta. Somebody. Somebody who apparently is, there's been a rumor going about he's going to be in the WWE Hall of Fame. Personally, I doubt that as a rumor. Like I think that's just not true, to be honest. But he is definitely one of the greats. Definitely one of the greats, absolutely. Especially from Japan. Well respected. Thank you. Just, just That's all I want to say to Keiji Muto and the great Mura. Thank you for all the fantastic matches. And thank you for this retirement talk. It was absolutely fantastic. So anyway... You guys stay safe. Hope you enjoyed the show. And yeah, I'll come back to you with some more some more stuff about independent wrestling, Japanese wrestling, deathmatch wrestling, whatever I can talk about. Whatever matters are on this week, I will talk about if I watch it. <laughs> and I almost forgot. At the end of uh, Great Mutter's last match with uh, Naito, though, there was there was one match left. There was meant to be a five-match series retirement, but there was one match left so there was. And a, a match nobody saw coming. It wasn't a long match. It wasn't exactly a five-star classic, but it, I was watching this match in the Japanese commentary, so I I wasn't really too sure what was going on. And then on commentary, both the legendary Chono was on commentary, and the next thing I know is Chono is getting out of his seat and going towards the ring. This is when I realized that Great Muta, or Keiji Muta, sorry, had called out Chono to the ring. They both get in the ring, and Chono takes his jacket off, puts his walking stick down as well. And then we realize we're about to get a match between Chono and Muta for the last time. Now, this match didn't last very long, obviously. It basically put a... Uh, it lasted about a minute, and it ended up with Chono putting Muta into his legendary STF uh, hold, the, the hold that he invented. And, uh, yo, and then obviously Muta taps out. But my goodness, what a little... A little great thing to do for the Japanese fans and fans like myself at the end, just to see Chono and Muta in the ring one last time. It was absolutely fantastic. And yes, I, in my original recording of this, forgot to actually mention this. And I had to come back because how can you talk about Muta's uh, retirement, you know, tour without mentioning at the very last he was back in the ring with the great Chono? So thank you again. <laughs>